Hi everyone. All right, Carlos here. Um, ooh, I gotta make sure I can flip it. Okay. I'm actually walking back. I'm backtracking. Um, I'm on my. <laughs> I'm usually walking against traffic, but now traffic is very, very close to me. If you can tell. I'm gonna flip it around in a minute. Um, but something particularly gruesome. Let me flip the video around. Hi, Heather. Glad to have you here, huh? <laughs> um, so something particularly gruesome that caught my eye and something I've been doing along my whole trek so far since May is every time I see roadkill, innocent animals that their way of life is violated by cars and, and traffic and everything, um, are uh, I've been taking pictures. Now this cat, I don't know if you can see, there's flies on it, um, but right next to the road, uh, I'm led to believe that this cat was also a victim of cars and the society we have uh, inherited and continue to put forward. So, um, anyways, like I said, I usually walk against traffic, and just because I walked back doesn't mean I'm with traffic. But I, um, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going. So let's say bye to the cat. Um, I do have an album that I want to put when I'm done with the walk. All the different animals that have been killed. I have well over a hundred. So, um, and I know the video doesn't capture it, but it smells somewhat too. So, uh, sorry, but this is the reality that happens that you pro probably, and myself definitely, something I've noticed is when I'm doing this walk, I notice good and bad things that I never would have seen from a car because Cars are insulators that are able to actually pull us out of the immediate environment in which our car is hurtling through the... Drop my water. Water is life. Um, what was I saying? Cars basically, these the people in the cars right now, and when I myself am in a car, I don't interact with the environment around. Even if I have the window open, 50, 60 miles an hour is way too fast to really get an appreciation of where you are. So everywhere becomes just a means to an end. It's just a town to get through, another town to get through, another town to get through, until you get to your destination. So we don't get intrinsic appreciation of everything before that. So just um, <clears throat> one thing to say. Now, I'm sort of doing a lot of pipelines right now, but the walk did start out. Let me flip it around. So Alright, so the walk did start out, but probably the first 50 stops that I went to were all, um, were all farms. How are you? And they were farms that were doing responsible farming. They weren't actually places that I was going to where there was an embattled sort of situation where the um, land was threatened with destruction the way the pipelines are the way Oyster Creek Nuclear Facility, which I'm getting fairly close to. I'll probably do a video there in an hour, hour and a half. I'm not sure if I'll be able to see the nuclear plant, but um, that's another place. Uh, another question about our basic use of energy. It's not just natural gas that's been fracked. Yeah, that's particularly terrible stuff, but that we rely, rely on coal, all these different things that our ancestors never needed. So why are we doing it? Um, and mixed into that, and what I want to point out is with cars and car culture is not just the emissions, not just the energy it takes to move 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds of metal and plastic hurtling through the environment, which is ex extremely violent. So not just, not just the energy needed to do that, but that it's bad for us on so many levels. We're sitting in a car, which we know sitting isn't good if it can be avoided. It's an uh, important thing to avoid if you can. Um, cars are also responsible for killing over a million people around the world every year. Um, I see uh, Raja Dada is watching from India. Hi, Raja Dada. And in India, um, I'm sure a lot of people are killed. When my time that I spent there, there was lots of uh, near accidents. I don't, near misses is a weird, one of those weird paradoxical adages. 
but you know it's it's a crazy world that we've sort of inherited that our ancestors didn't rely on any of this um, I don't think it's even I think we could sustain the population as it is now and we'd have more land to do it if we did everything locally which would mean we weren't relying on cars anyways obviously it seems like a dreamer thing to say but uh, I don't know what else to do it just I, I can't imagine this going on for that much longer. Suburban sprawl just keeps going and going. So how are we going to counter it? What are we gonna do? Like roads kill lots of people, they kill lots of animals, they kill ecosystems, they islandize ecosystems. Tom Catino, who just tuned in, um, probably does know about habitat fragmentation when he put a road through a forest like this road right here this was probably through forest land and when you do that not every single species is okay with roads even crossing them so you simplify the ecosystems on both sides even though the road doesn't take out that much acreage it destroys the complex interactions it's like putting a line a metallic piece of let's just say a plane, like a two-dimensional plane between two parts of your brain, your brain's not going to work that well overall because you just destroy the ability for a complex interaction between one area and the other. You've hem hemispherized it and took out the holistic element. And that's essentially a lot of what science does. So roads right now... Um, I would say happy rush hour. It's not rush hour yet. Uh, but cars are still zooming by, and when you walk by them over and over, you start to get an appreciation of how um, powerful they are. And it's not a majestic power. I'm not in awe of them. They're really just a combination of a lot of different mechanical parts. I don't see them as a whole entity. Um, the way I do an organism but uh, so I don't really have a respect for them they to me are one of the primary enemies um, and when people associate with them it's a thing of degrees they're themselves sort of making themselves an enemy of me I have lots of enemies right now in this immediate environment things that could potentially kill me I, I like to think back to our ancestors a lot. Those of you who've watched these videos might know that. Um, our ancestors, when, and it's sort of a corrective, that's why I do it. Our ancestors, I doubt, had, well I know, if you go back far enough, didn't have constant enemies around them. The worst thing that could have happened to them could have been an attack from a bear or a lion where, or some sort of large predator or catching a disease, uh, an infection. They didn't catch diseases the same way because they were much healthier immune systems overall, but they did get infections, bloodborne infections, I'm sure, that killed many of them. Um, but these things usually took time and the worst that would happen is they'd be eaten by a predator, um, which is pretty bad. But here we're just... You could have it. They never had to deal with anything moving so fast that was such a mass volume as a car suddenly just plowing into them. And now we survive things like that too because of our, our uh, medical abilities. But nobody ever had to survive disabled in the past to the degree that we are able to survive disabled. So nobody had to have an ongoing uh, life where they lost limbs, where they're paraplegic. Thank you. Um, it's just, <laughs> it's a crazy, crazy world. And I just said thank you to that person. I remember I wrote about this uh, probably about a year ago. Um, it's very, people, pedestrians are very deferential generally, myself included, in front of cars, like the, thanking the cars for stopping and not hitting us many cases we do have the right of way. I might have just been walking and not had the right of way, but the fact that machines are sort of given a higher 
Oh man, I'm getting tired. <laughs> I'm gonna stop this video soon. I think the point is lost, but I wanted to just uh, show that I'm doing um, an album. Uh, I take pictures of different roadkill as I go when I see it. And that cat just sort of I thought would pull some of you in. That cat at the beginning of the video. So I'm gonna stop the video. If you're curious about the cat, you could rewind and go back. But that's just one of the many, 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 vi countless victims that aren't even, you know, aren't even cared for. And I know, here, I'll flip this around. What the? I don't know what I just hit. Okay. So, um, people lament sometimes, vultures, for coming and eating dead things and crows and all those kind of carrion, carrion birds is something evil. But they're part of the ecosystem and they're valuing something. And when they, especially when they eat roadkill, which these flies were eating the cat, and I'm sure bird at some point might eat some of the cat, at least they're honoring that this thing has value as a form of life. And they're recycling it into the ecosystem. When cars hit deer or whatever, um, just left. Usually, there are some people who do know how to butcher a deer and do take it, but generally, um, there's no service that says, let's turn this into food. Uh, it's just left to die. And fortunately, the rest of the ecosystem has sense to it to make use of it. And nature's always ready to play the corrective role, but um, we keep creating new and novel ways to destroy life. So you got to wonder if at some point the ecosystem as a whole that has all these resources will not be discouraged. And I don't know how many more chances humans will have. We really are a plague on the planet as long as we continue suburban way of life, this industrial way of life uh, that requires a lot more energy to keep us alive than we give back. We're very, very greedy in our current ways. And I'm not saying I'm above, above it, I say we. Um, I'm in the United States where we're the highest energy consumers on the planet. So there's lots to be learned even from other countries. But all right, I'm going to end it here. Uh, thank you for everybody who showed up and watched. Um, I'm doing this as a consciousness raising thing. So I hope that I've given you something to think about. Um, not sure, but I can only hope, and I'm gonna keep going, and pretty soon I'll be at a nuclear facility, which I've never seen this one before. I've only seen one before. Um, it's Oyster Creek, but all right. Hasta luego.